Delaware flunked a national integrity test. We'll talk to a man who wants to fix that. And Darth Vader is here. This is The Delaware Way. I'm Larry Menti. Welcome to The Delaware Way. The Center for Public Integrity, a nonprofit, gives the state of Delaware an F for integrity. The nonprofit ranks every state by 13 categories for openness and accountability, transparency. Delaware got an F in nine of the categories, ranking Delaware 48th out of the 50 states for openness and accountability. Someone who has been advocating for more transparency in Delaware government for some time is John Kowalko, Representative John Kowalko, representing Newark. He is the Democrat. Uh, and I would imagine you're not surprised by this. Uh, no, actually, I was surprised that we weren't 50th. I don't know what kind of activities takes place in those other two states. But well, how I, bad can it be? Uh, give me an example. I'll give you an example. I, I asked for a, a, I, I made a FOIA request uh, for all correspondence between DOE, uh, Department of Education, uh, and, and the governor's office. And I, I received a, a pile of hard copy, even though I requested email copies. And uh, it, not, uh, not redacted, but not in there was anything from the governor, Mark Allen South. And I, I tried, uh, I couldn't, it was, didn't seem appropriate to me that, that there was no correspondence between the governor on this important issue because I just stood on the steps of Warner with him uh, about the priority schools. And uh, so as I delved into it, I found out at that time that he had a private email that if you didn't ask explicitly for that, you wouldn't get information coming from that. And not to mention a lot of uh, more concerning items that, that are now in our FOIA laws that when we, uh, when we regard the, our own exemption for the General Assembly members. Now, I have here a letter that you sent out to your yes. colleagues that you just gave to me. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're calling to fix some of this. Yes. Talk about specifically how you would. Uh, well, the first thing I would do is I would, uh, I would uh, amend the uh, law that we have currently in place. The original uh, FOIA law upgrade, so to speak, was to have FOIA through all agencies, and all elected officials. We, uh, not we, the, the General Assembly passed an amendment uh, that was sponsored by uh, Speaker Schwarzkopf, at the time Majority Leader Schwarzkopf and Majority Whip Longhurst, which, ex which excludes the General Assembly members from any FOIA requirements, any release of their emails. Uh, I felt that was a bad idea at the time. I think it's a bad idea now because if we have policy discussions, policy dialogues, whether they're interagency or inter-General Assembly uh, dialogues, and we don't allow the public to view that we're we're making that we're making we're making that sausage like they talk about how how ugly a process is we're making that sausage behind closed doors so no one knows what they're eating when they get it out on the plate and and that is the the, the, the surest way to establish a mistrust with the public especially when you make decisions like the budget decisions we put an epilogue language every year at the end of the, the epilogue language is put in on a last minute basis uh, two years ago it was put in the grant and aid the epilogue there's some of the epilogue lines i've been fighting against and it, and it was not displayed thus tell me why that's the important day. the epilogue language well how does uh, why are you centering on that uh well uh, one of the issues i fought for the last seven years was the fact that in the code it reads that and I'm going to take, for example, charter schools, because it does apply also to traditional schools. The charter schools will return all appropriated transportation money that is not used for transportation purposes. That's logical. Mm -hmm. That's legitimate. Makes you sense. appropriate for a purpose. Sure. So that's in the law. And every year for the last seven budgets, in the epilogue language, it has said, notwithstanding Title 14, Section 508, which requires this return of the money in excess of transportation, Charter schools will be allowed to keep it. Now, what's that do? That keeps no accountability, because they don't have to display it, that, uh, no specificity for the allocation to go where it's supposed to go. And uh, quite frankly, it, it's, it's uh, been about $1.2 million every year that they've gotten to keep uh, under that pretext. And then the most, uh, I think, uh, uh, atrocious example of the epilogue language abuse was uh, two years ago, we allowed the ESEA flexibility requirements that are crafted by the State Board of Education with no oversight, no review by us. We've allowed that to contravene any code and it's written the same way. Notwithstanding the existing code, the department is authorized to make craft regulations that will suit the purpose of getting us yes, the ESE, ESEA waiver flexibility. The problem is in the nuance of this. We are, we are allowed and gifted and responsible for giving regulatory capacity to agencies that had the force of law. So we have exempted 
them for coming before us and giving them this regulatory capacity. Epilogue language is very useful in certain circumstances. That's when last minute things come up that have to be applied and have to be put into the budget because we have a, a statutory date of June 30th to have the budget. Constitutionally, we have to have the budget balance. You're centering on, on legislative accountability. I understand why yeah. you are. It's what you have the most direct effect over. But in the Center for Public Integrity report, mm -hmm. they also said there's little judicial accountability as well. They also uh, gave you an F for pension management which should be concerning. Um, are, do you, are you going to try to deal with those two things as well? Uh, I don't know how much I can get into the pension management thing uh, because I, I, don't, I don't have a, a finger on the pulse of that. I, I do know that there have been many questions, have been many questions that have arisen about how our pension management. I do have a, a, a bill, which is pending, to uh, put the cash management board uh, under what we are all obligated, and that is an annual reporting to the public integrity uh, to the public integrity uh, division of our holdings. We use all General Assembly, all of the people in government. Now we have a cash management board which deals with over $2 billion in assets, and we don't require them to yearly, annually, file this uh, public integrity report, which would disclose their interest in holdings. It's very vague. So it seems like the lack of transparency, the lack of openness, goes across the board. It's, yes, it's it almost does. everything in yes. Delaware government. Uh, do you hold out any hope that you're going to have any luck with this? Yes, because I think the people are getting fed up with, this, with the secretiveness. That's why I hate the display when it comes to, uh, when it, when it comes to a head. Uh, in other words, uh, okay, this, uh, the tra Toronto transportation money, there's $1.2 million. The uh, epilogue language which has caused us to have almost a breakdown in our education reform movement. Uh, these are all examples of what happens with the lack of transparency. But sometimes you have to point out what is going wrong with the system and so that you can identify why is it going wrong, because we don't have the transparency or open government that we ha can have. Even when the public makes inquiries into our uh, a a FOIA inquiry, I've had uh, a, a, an activist, uh, Kevin O'Land, who asked for, uh, a, made a FOIA request, and, and they said uh, that'll cost you $6,500. They're a private citizen. Yeah, you're just supposed to get that. Thank you so much for coming in, I, and we'll be following it. And please okay. come back yes, and talk about it, because I think it is extremely important yeah. uh, for good government in the state of Delaware. I think so it I, is, too. I, I, and I think good back. government, and, and uh, we talked off the air, but I really I want to acknowledge it. Good government is bipartisan. Bipartisan knows no boundaries of secretiveness. Well, the, the, I, we'll get into this another okay. time, but the problem, I think, sometimes is when one party dominates. It yeah, becomes well, much, it does, much more secretive. It doesn't secretive. help because then you have a, an aura of invincibility about you and you have a, a much of a, a more of an incentive to keep anything that may be questionable secretive that way you can continue your, your dominance. Representative John Kowalko, a Democrat from Newark who has a, a fight ahead of him. Uh, when we come back, you've probably heard the story that ABC is doing a new drama called Murder Town. We'll have someone who wants to talk about that from Wilmington and also taxes when Delaware Way continues.